Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News. It seems Mercedes are putting out all the stops to try and attract Max Verstappen to their team to replace Lewis Hamilton. Reportedly approaching Pierre Wache, current right-hand man to Adrian Newey and apparently a man deemed by the Verstappen camp to be more important to the success of the Red Bull car than Newey himself. If Mercedes can successfully put off this transition, that may be the key to getting Verstappen in next year's W16 and beyond. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all though, the big drama going down at McLaren today because David Sanchez, former Ferrari man, who has recently joined as their technical director. Now, McLaren's a bit weird, really, in terms of the way they've got their technical structure going. They had, uh, what, James Key over there. They got rid of him after the failure of their 2022 car. They've now massively restructured their technical department. David Sanchez was working on part of the technical director role, but nonetheless, a very storied engineer and an important figure, seemingly, of their restructuring as they intend over the coming years to once again become a championship winning force. Sanchez was in this role for three months and today he departed from the role in rather controversial fashion. Sanchez says the following, while the role we envisioned and had agreed to was not aligned with the reality of the position I found, I leave with the respect for the leadership, admiration for the dedication of my colleagues and appreciation for the openness and honesty in which we discussed and arrived at this decision. But let's just look at the first bit. They turned up here, it seems. Sanchez had a certain idea of what he would be doing, and the role we envisioned was not aligned with the reality of the position that I found. We actually got this from Andrea Stella, team principal. The further step in the evolution of the structure of the technical department and of the working model within the team, I mean, there's so much jargon, it's incredible, isn't it? Signify our commitment to constantly enhancing our technical capabilities and workflows with greater efficiency and effectiveness. So pretty much they're saying, you know, we get rid of Sanchez, things are going to get better. And they talk about what resulted in this misalignment, as it were, but it's quite clear that even some of the language used is relatively cold from both parties, given it's a press release and it's all good PR and all this type of stuff. You guys know how it works. The feeling is that there's been a bit of a falling out here within the first couple of months of Sanchez at Ferrari, or McLaren, sorry, former Ferrari man, in terms of what he wanted to do and what the team had in mind for him to do in that situation. Maybe it makes sense that there's some sort of teething issues with this restructuring, and McLaren then says, yes, you know what, we're going to do more technical restructuring. So Rob Marshall now becomes the chief designer. He joined from Red Bull not long ago. They've rejigged who takes on the roles as the technical director from the engineering and the aero side. And then, well, Andrea Stella himself will assume the duties of the technical director from the performance side until they find a permanent hire to replace David Sanchez. So strange scenario, it's got to be said. Upon joint reflection, it became apparent that the role did not align with their expectations, etc, etc. He's going to go elsewhere. So what's happened behind the scenes? Got to be said, a relatively rare misstep for McLaren in recent times. They have made big progress over the last couple of seasons. They finally feel like they might be able to win a race on merit again. It might still not happen this season. Their car is still a little bit behind where the Ferrari is and certainly behind where the Red Bull is. But in Suzuka, they should be very competitive. They were last year and Piastri got a second place last year, as did Norris with a fair few. If Verstappen had a brake issue that weekend, they would have won a race at the end of last season, of course, their last race victory coming back in 2021 at that crazy Monza Grand Prix with the 1-2 for Ricardo and Norris respectively. And at that point, there was lots of optimism that McLaren would turn things around into the new cycle of regulations. That has not been the case. But at the moment, McLaren are able to build better cars than Mercedes are. So if theoretically the Mercedes engine for 2026 is a rocket ship, then we might have something on our hands here in terms of McLaren returning to the top of the sport. And it seems like they've made big progress. But yeah, rare misstep here. What Whatever's happened behind the scenes, not happy with Sanchez or he's not happy with McLaren and therefore they are parting ways in a rather cold manner. Could also be said that many of the individuals involved under Bonotto's Ferrari and now gone, right? I mean, Sanchez there was head of vehicle concept. He's gone to McLaren. And sure, he's still a very talented engineer. I'm sure he'll land on his feet somewhere else. But nonetheless, you've got to wonder exactly what the full story was behind this and why just so many of these individuals from Ferrari have now been booted out by Fred Vasseur. And of course, now Sanchez has gone from Ferrari or McLaren as well. Let's not get that wrong again for various reasons. Speaking of Red Bull, however, the fastest car on the grid, they are expected to get even faster come Suzuka. Upgrades are arriving. We talked yesterday that Mercedes are set to bring some minor upgrades, as are Ferrari, as are a few other teams as well. But apparently the Red Bull package will not be minor, but actually will rather be significant. And this is why Red Bull are in rather a luxurious position at the moment, because they can work on their car, this year's car, so much earlier than other 
other teams because they were wrapping up last year's championship at basically a few rounds into the season. So they've had more time to work on this car in terms of what the development plan is going to be. And the feeling is that in terms of upgrades, Red Bull are very well positioned right now to take their car even further ahead than it presently is, at least on most of the circuits we have seen so far this season. Suzuka has been a great track for Red Bull the last couple of years, and they will arrive with a major upgrade package, or at least something relatively significant. Now, a while ago, Autosport reported, motorsport.com as well, basically the same thing, that these upgrades could involve some sort of zero pod concept. There was a feeling that they may change some of the side pod designs to even align more closely with what Mercedes had. And it would be remarkable if Mercedes actually had some very good ideas with their zero pods in terms of downforce generation due to exposing further areas of the floor and their even last year's W14 shoulders, let's say, on the car, the bazookas, whatever people call them, towards the rear of the car on the engine cover, the Red Bull have now introduced for this season. Clearly, Mercedes have had some decent ideas there, but putting that together with the suspension package and certainly with the floor doesn't seem to have worked for Mercedes and that continues. But it's a mixed opinions and belief on whether there will be a side pod change. Will something look a bit more like a zero pod? Some have been teasing either way. Now, some say actually, no, it's not going to be a zero pod concept. And I don't think that they could make that radical a transition. There could be changes to the side pods again to make them even slimmer. Will they become zero pod-esque like the W13? Probably not. The feeling is, though, that the floor upgrade is actually what it is this weekend, and it's a change of the floor that Red Bull are bringing. That's what Formula Uno say, that um, this upgrade for Milton Keynes or from Milton Keynes to Japan will not be considered minor. These updates include a new floor, which Ferrari will not change until round seven. So this was the point that Ferrari are trying to bring upgrades earlier if they can, but they just won't be able to do everything they want to. So they will bring some things, but the feeling is that Red Bull are ahead of the curve here, and they're bringing a new floor already and uh, Red Bull will apparently not change to the zero pod concept, but we will see what they come up with this weekend. Dr. Rob says the same thing that from what he's heard, it's not going to be a zero pod design, but it's going to be nonetheless rather significant in terms of trying to take a step forward, which they probably don't need around this circuit based on Max Verstappen's history here over the last couple of seasons. Of course, the scene of his world championship win back in 2022 in that controversial fashion with the red flag and Johnny Herbert told him he'd won it and nobody really knew. It was an absolute mess. Max Verstappen, however, did actually comment on this. He was asked the question, right, to like, what are you guys doing with the upgrades? Or what are you cooking up over there? And Verstappen said the following. He didn't really say much, but I thought it was interesting. Well, I mean, the colour will be the same. You will see, he says. So read between the lines is that it's quite a significant visual change, right? Because he's saying, well, the colour's going to be the same, but uh, you'll see about everything else. Which does imply that there are going to be some some visual changes to the car, right? Because obviously the color's staying the same and we don't get to see the floor. So if the floor is new and different, then great. But I don't know. I feel like there's going to be some visual changes to that machine. Otherwise, I'm not sure Verstappen would have said that. We will find out later this week, of course. Ferrari, they've got a couple of things. A revised rear upper wishbone fairing to Suzuka. So they're not bringing much Ferrari. But there is a major Imola package on the way. As for many teams, McLaren included, Mercedes included, if it even works. That's another question for those guys. We'll discuss in a second. Ferrari are planning to bring some elements of that major upgrade package forward. This is likely to be one of them. But um, as I've said, Red Bull are a little bit ahead of the curve, helped in large part by some of the individuals they have within that team, such as, for example, Pierre Wache, right-hand man, as it were, to Adrian Newey. It is absolutely no secret right now that Mercedes are in a major decline. They've had less points, fewer points, season on season from 2021 to the present day. 2022, Two, looking back on it, was actually a pretty good year. Despite the W13, they were relatively competitive with Red Bull at very certain tracks. Zandvoort, for one example. Spain, even earlier this season, is one example. And then certainly Austin, they were pretty good. And then Brazil, they got the 1-2 at the end of the season in, you know, generally the fastest car on pace that weekend after making the changes they did. The year after was worse in ways they didn't necessarily expect after sticking with their concepts. This year, the feeling was, well, they're changing everything in their car from top to bottom. 
they can't possibly maintain some of their issues from the last couple of seasons in terms of instability of the rear end of the car and these other problems that have been complained about at length and frankly correlation issues when what their car does on track simply does not replicate what it does in the simulator so as a result of this there are many individuals Mercedes are trying to bring onto the team. If they want to actually rescue this situation, if Total Wolf really wants to say, you know what, we've declined every year for the last several years, Hamilton is leaving, other individuals are leaving, there's a question as to whether we're even a particularly attractive team to join right now. Like if you're Carlos Sainz, would you prefer to go to Aston Martin or to go to Mercedes? Or if you're Fernando Alonso, would you prefer to join Mercedes or say at Aston Martin, assuming the Red Bull seat isn't an option for either of those guys? There's a question on that now. Given Aston Martin's upcoming works relationship with Honda, their big factory, all these other things that are potentially moving them in the right direction, in addition to making what we believe to be an astronomical offer to Adrian Newey to reunite his partnership with Honda, that might make a fair bit of sense. So Mercedes clearly needs, it's not just about the drivers, they need more technical staff. They've lost so many individuals, Mercedes, over the last couple of years for their power unit side to their aerodynamic side, and now they are clearly floundering to understand what is going on. So Simone Resta is coming in, Enrico Sampo is coming in, there's talk about uh, what they can do for their simulation, correlation, these other questions, and also just straight up designing a better car. But the point is, and Total Wolf actually said this, he really wants to get Max Verstappen into the team, if it's even possible. The Red Bull drama has receded somewhat, but the feeling is to me that Horner really has taken control of that team now to an extent that he wasn't necessarily in power before. What that means for the other camps involved in the drama, the Austrian camp, the Helmut Marco side, the Os Verstappen, and therefore Max Verstappen side, I think that remains to be seen. Of course, if Max was to leave Red Bull to join another team for next season, then he would effectively be sacrificing the chance of winning the 2025 title, and well, presumably at least if he was to join Mercedes that year, whoever was in the Red Bull if it was Alonso or Sainz or whoever, would have an excellent opportunity of doing just that. So it feels like a bit of a long shot, but Total Wolf has made it very clear that Verstappen is his number one choice. He says, yes, it's a relationship that needs to happen, and if Verstappen is available, I'll get him absolutely guaranteed, and we're going to do whatever it takes to bring Max Verstappen into the team. This is also the quirk, I would say, of the cost cap, is that the cost cap limits what the teams can spend on development, and also certainly on engineering talent. But the driver the salaries are excluded, as are the top three salaries in the organization. So you can theoretically pay $100 million for all of your staff, probably less than that, but you can also pay $100 million for one specific driver, or if you wanted, for one specific technical director. So I find the cost gap a little bit strange in the sense that the teams are still basically spending the same amount of money. They just spend them in different places now. They might invest that money in boat racing or bike development or hypercar projects and maybe some of that expertise comes back to help them in the Formula 1 project and I don't know if the cost gap has really done that much to change those things, although technically the teams spend less on Formula 1, but there's various reasons why that doesn't necessarily align with the reality of what these teams are still spending. But the big point would be that if you do want to bring on and hire top guys, you, if anything, have more money to do so now because you're paying the engineers less within the main organization. And lots of these organizations have fewer engineers, but therefore they can reportedly give big offers to some of the top guys who would be excluded on that three top earning employees outside of the cost cap to come in instead. So this is where we talk about Pierre Wache. So the duo right now really at Red Bull is Adrian Newey, who of course is the main man, the spearhead, the figurehead, whatever you want to say. And Pierre Wache is his, you know, obviously deserves a lot of credit as well for what he's done for the team. And it's clearly not all about Newey, although there have been reports that, you know what, Newey did basically design the suspension for 2022 himself, which has been massively important over the last couple of years. But reportedly, Verstappen's camp on this, consider Wache to be be more important or at least as important as Adrian Newey himself. So any team that would be able to hire Newey or any team that would be able to hire Wache and steal them away from Red Bull and if there's any time to do that now is the time. Yes the news in the media and the whole Horner stuff has calmed down but there's no doubt that in terms of internal friction and chaos and developments now is the time if you want to try and, you know, lure some of these guys away to do so. They're at the top of their game. They've achieved everything that, you know, they want to achieve in the sport. Dominated last season. These guys are at the top of the sport. These are the times in which these kind of appeals would actually make some sense. If, let's say, you were to offer the man a lot of money and also 
also potentially equity in the team or whatever the case might be. So rumor has it that Mercedes are targeting Wache to come into Mercedes as the same way that Aston Martin seems to be targeting Newey, which seems to be an intention effectively to seduce Verstappen as they describe here in the article. So what do you guys think about this? Would this happen? Would Wache say yes to this potential proposal? It's always a possibility depending on the situation itself. There's also rumors that Ferrari wanted Wache, right? Because he is good friends with Loic Serra, who is a man that's recently left Mercedes to be joining Ferrari for next season. The feeling is that John Elkan and Fred Vassar of Ferrari have basically been talking to Loic Serra and saying, hey, how about you talk to your mate Pierre and try and see if we can get him to come to Ferrari as well. But it feels like there is lots of interest, as there always is, in the top technical staff of the dominant force of the, of the sports right now. And those two figures, in terms of chief engineer, Wache, and main design genius, Adrian Newey, they are trying to make a move work. But as it's even described here, Ferrari have tried to make this happen with Wache, but with apparently no success or to no avail, which would imply that if he doesn't want to go to Ferrari, then maybe he wouldn't want to go to Mercedes. But there could be different offers in play. The whole, you know, move to Italy thing is always a bit of a hurdle for the likes of Newey and, you know, other engineers that are based in the UK. That can be a challenge, and understandably so. But I think not just in terms of attracting Verstappen, but merely in terms of trying to get back to winning races, let alone championships, they need to have some, you know, new thought processes within that team and they will bring in new individuals but getting someone like that would be massively important because Toto even says they changed everything on the W15 but yet it wasn't enough and um, it seems that the fundamental issue is at the core and they still haven't solved that. Speaking of Toto real quick as well it was rumoured, actually not rumoured, it was confirmed a few days ago that he wasn't going to be attending the Japanese Grand Prix. Now though a change of plans and he actually will be there. Not sure why the change of plan precisely but he will be at the track this weekend in Japan. There is a feeling that Mercedes might go a little bit better here than otherwise it kind of goes both ways because first of all that sector one the high speed kind of corners and stuff should be a nightmare for the Mercedes that struggled over the last couple of races but there should be cooler temperatures and the feeling is so far that Mercedes it perform better when the temperatures are cooler so maybe there's something in that it also might rain which could throw things um well in an interesting position the chances of rain have decreased somewhat only 35 percent here for the sunday now but um it's still very much possible that it will be cold damp and raining in suzuka which well may throw something of a spanner in the works but very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time